Well, I've just watched the first episode of Series 10 of Doctor Who, and I thought I would do a video giving my thoughts on this episode. It's exactly what I expected from a Stephen Moffat season opener. Stephen Moffat led us to believe that this was going to be kind of a reboot. It was going to be kind of a, a jumping off point for new viewers. And I didn't really see any difference between this episode and other season openers like Partners in Crime or Smith and Jones or Rose or The Eleventh Hour. The episode opened from the companion's point of view and the episode pretty much focused mainly on introducing the companion. We got literally 50 minutes of introducing a character. <sighs> okay, there's, there's so much that is wrong with this episode, okay, and there's so much that I want to cover, but I've made some notes and um, I didn't make these while I was watching it. I just, um, I jotted these down after I saw it because I wanted to keep these fresh on my, on my mind. And these were, these are the main things that I, that troubled me about this episode and they're the main, they're the things that I think uh, hurt this episode the most. The, the the main thing, of course, is that this the episode revolving around the character of Bill. I don't understand why New Doctor Who introduces new characters this way. Why it introduces why why is it that Moffat has to cram all of the character development into one story? You're you're basically trying to force the audience to like this character. He's done it with Amy Pond, he's done it with River Song, he's done it with Clara, he's done it with Missy. Their introductory story is like this this long, elongated, stretched out, in your face, you've got to know every little detail about this character, leave nothing on the table sort of approach, where by the time the episode's over, you know everything there is to know about this character, but you didn't really get, I mean, what was that episode about? There wasn't, you didn't... You didn't take anything else away from that episode other than uh, the, the entire life history of this new character. Th that's not developing a character, okay? That's that's just cramming a character down someone's throat, okay, in an effort to force them to like to accept the character. Okay, if you treat the introduction of a character the same way you would treat like a friendship in, in real life, when you first meet someone for the first time, you don't spend the first hour talking, you know, learning everything there is to know about that person. You know, their deepest, darkest secrets, their personal relationships with other people, uh, you know, this sort of stuff. That trust is gained over time. You gain, you uh, you form a bond with that person and they, they open up to you. And that's the way character development should work with, with not just Doctor Who, any series, but and uh, any other series it does. That's my biggest complaint, is that it was just 50 minutes of just cramming Bill down my throat. I don't think that she's necessarily a bad companion. I don't think she would be a bad companion, but you just, you just, just like with Amy Pond and, and Clara, you just go about introducing them the wrong way. I mean, why can't you introduce the character like Romana was introduced in um, the Rebels operation, or Leela in The Face of Evil? Uh, Romana was introduced as uh, the Doctor's companion, and she was a time lady, sent to be with the Doctor by the Time Lords, and but the central focus, uh, even the first episode of the Rebels operation, what the central focus wasn't about telling us everything there is to know about Romana. Uh, m many of the things that we learned about Romana, we learned over time. Uh, she her character developed as a result of her being with the Doctor for a few seasons, and and that's the way a character should be developed. They should be their their development should be a byproduct of their experiences with the Doctor. It shouldn't be that you have to cram everything and throw everything in our face in the first 50 minutes, you know, and now we'll, now, bam, this character is now part of the Doctor Who TARDIS crew. Anyway, that's my, that's my, free, my biggest complaint with this episode was that the companion, it was, it focused almost entirely on the companion. It was almost more or less told from the companion's point of view. And, uh, it was, this was all done at the expense of uh, the actual story, or, or what would have been the story. Another thing that I found to be just ridiculous, and this is to me just a, a gaping hole in the whole logic behind this story. Okay, the the, the re I'm, I'm guessing the reason for the Doctor being on present day Earth right now is because he said that he was hiding and that no one can know he exists, or no one can know about him, or blah, 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 whatever it was. It was whenever he was about to wipe Bill's memory. Okay, what is the Doctor hiding from, or who is he hiding from? And if he's wanting to hide, 
why would he choose to hide on present day Earth at a university giving lectures? That's kind of the opposite of hiding. I'm pretty sure people are going to know about you if you do that. I could be wrong. There was another Dr. What joke at the beginning of the episode. Uh, that's getting kind of stale. In fact, that's uh, getting a lot of stale. Uh, the whole Dr. Who or Dr. What, I mean, I think they've literally had that joke in every season since 2005. I, I remember here, the, the episode I remember it being in was Boomtown. In the in series one with the, the ninth doctor and uh, it was whenever the ninth doctor was he came to the wherever it was to see Margaret the Slovene and the secretary or whatever it was out at the front desk uh, he told he told him the doctor told the secretary to go in there and just tell her that the doctor is here to see her and the secretary says doctor who and then it, it was fine, okay? It worked, okay? Because it was the first time we'd heard it in, in years, okay? And if you had left it at that, okay? And if that had been the only time in the last 10 years, it wouldn't have been that big of a deal. But you've, you've kind of made it a running gag since 2005. In fact, Stephen Moffat made a whole fucking season about it. So now it's just, you run it in the ground and it's not funny anymore. Okay, the villain in the story is, to me, a carbon copy of the villain, the, uh, what was it, Prisoner Zero, Prisoner Zero from the 11th Hour. There was no real threat. They didn't really hurt anybody. She didn't, she didn't really, it was never clear what her motive was. She didn't have any motivation to, like, why was she there on Earth? I mean, apparently they, what, had they crashed? We didn't ever really find out who or what the villain really was or whatever that was because uh, there was a couple of shots looking from inside the puddle up to the ground and then they had like this uh, what sound what reminded me of like a Zygon, a classic Zygon or a classic Ice Warrior voice and uh, which was very classic Doctor Who by the way but then you just ruined it because you never, it's never explained who that was or what that was or where it came from or what they were doing there or why they were there or any of that shit. The, the, the concept of the villain seemed to be a cross between uh, Carrie and uh, the villains from the Waters of Mars and the 11th Hour because uh, if you watch the 11th Hour, uh, Prisoner Zero, whenever Prisoner Zero would take the form of another Anybody from that, uh, what was it, Leadworth or Ledworth or whatever? Uh, that, that's literally what Prisoner Zero would do in, in human form. They would just stand there and stare at the doctor and stare at Amy Pond and try to look menacing. And uh, that's pretty much what this character Heather did throughout this entire 50 minute episode. Anytime she ever appeared anywhere, even when she was stalking them, uh, she, just, she just stood there and I think she screamed at him a couple of times. Even at the climax in the story, uh, there was not really any, I, I didn't really see anything wrong with what the, what, what the villain was trying to achieve. I mean, it sounded to me like they, they just wanted to go roam the universe and they just wanted Bill to go with them. So it sounded like Bill wanted to go. She wanted to go see the universe anyway. As a matter of fact, we know she did because she wanted to go with the doctor. She didn't want to forget what happened. So it's clear that she wanted to go out there and see what was out there. So what, what, what would have been wrong with that? The doctor kept telling her that it wasn't Heather anymore, but it's clear that, uh, at that in that final scene, it's clear that whatever it was, whether there was anything left of Heather in there or not, it's clear that there was some sort of affection uh, towards Bill. So I, I don't I don't see why that would have been such a bad thing for, for Bill to have gone with her. There was just nothing at stake. There was there was no there was nothing at stake and there was no sense of danger there was no there was nothing threatening about this uh, this Heather character or the, the villain or whatever uh, so in, in that respect I mean the, the the whole episode was just you know bone dry I mean no pun intended the other thing that I didn't like about the villain was how their how she was able to follow them wherever they went I mean it's 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 one thing to follow them. It's one thing to stalk Bill in her apartment, you know, because you can, because uh, you can f flow through the drains and everything. But she arrives in Sydney, Australia, almost immediately after the doctor gets there, and I'm not sure how many miles it is between 
London and Sydney, Australia, but I'm pretty sure it's more than 3,000. So how, how, how does she get there so fast? And then the doctor takes Bill 23 million years into the future on another planet, and within a matter of minutes, uh, Heather has shown up there. So it's, it's never explained how she got there or how she's able to travel to the future, how she's able to travel through time. So that part was just a bust. You know, I, it's, that was just, it, it's like I said, it, it's one thing for her to be able to track her to her apartment, but 23 million years into the future, Come on, that's that's a bit of a stretch, okay? Even for science fiction fanatics, that's a bit of a stretch. It's hard to swallow. So especially when you don't give us any kind of mechanism for why or how she can do this. <sighs> okay, the thing that pissed me off the most about this episode, and this should be a surprise to anyone who watches my channel or, or knows anything about my views on New Doctor Who, was the Movellans. <clears throat> there was this big... Uh, there was this big hype before the season started about how a classic villain was returning. This time it was going to be the Movellans from Destiny of the Daleks. So they, so they ramp up this hype over the last few months about how the Rebellions are coming back and like clockwork yet again it's it's fleeting glimpses of them in two shots where they're obscured by smoke and flames and stuff look if if you're going to bring back the if you're going to bring the Rebellions back or or any any classic villain any villain from the original series if you're going to bring them back for the sake of just two shots don't publicize it don't even bother publicizing it okay because it's so insignificant to the series, and it's so insignificant to the to the viewing experience that it's not even worth mentioning. Okay, the Mabellans didn't play any pivotal role in this story. They weren't the central. They weren't the focal point of this plot. It, it was almost like they were just thrown in there for as an attempt in an attempt to please the classic fans, and it had the ap exact opposite effect. Okay, it didn't please the classic fans. It just pissed them off more. And it's only because you you make such a fucking big deal out of it. You make such a big deal out of how you're bringing the Mobellans back, and you did this exact same thing with the Daleks, with the Cybermen. Well, there's also been this big, huge talk about how the um, the original Cybermen from the Tenth Planet are going to be in this story or in this season. And I, I've seen them in a couple of shots in the trailers. But I would not be surprised at all if this we get the same treatment with the Tenth planet Cybermen as we did with these Mobellans, where they're, they're not even going to be the central point of the story. They're just going to be like a, a side nod, kind of just thrown in there. Kind of like the, the the picture on the doctor's desk of Susan, of gratuitous throwing the classic fans a bone or that kind of thing. Yeah, that pissed me off. That was the thing I hated the most about the entire episode, was that you just you teased us for two fucking months about how the Mobellans were coming back, and then exactly how I, exactly as I predicted, it was just two shots where they're obscured. Literally, you could have taken those two shots out of this episode and the episode still would have worked. Okay, the Daleks. Uh, the Doctor takes Bill to a planet where the Daleks are because... reasons? I, I think it was kind of implied that the, in, in an effort to try to stop this uh, benign force Let's just be real, that's what it was. This benign force from following them, the Doctor was going to try to trap them with a Dalek to try to get a Dalek, you know, get, to try to get Heather between the Doctor and the, uh, the Dalek's uh, fire. It didn't even work. I mean, the, the Dalek, the Dalek's gun had no effect on it whatsoever. Surprise. And so that entire sequence was just a waste of airtime because it didn't, it didn't accomplish anything. It didn't contribute anything to the story. It, it was all leading up to the scene where, where Bill and Heather make contact and Bill goes through that little, you know, hallucinogenic thing where she sees the universe and everything. If, if the whole point of this scene with the Daleks was to lead up to this climax where Bill and Heather make contact, you, you could have just done that on Earth at the university, okay? There was no need to take us all around the freaking universe in the TARDIS the Daleks being in this, they didn't contribute anything to it. The Mavellans definitely didn't contribute anything to the story. They were just thrown in there for the hell of it. I don't understand why either. I don't understand why the Mavellans or the Daleks were even in this episode. Okay, because they didn't serve any purpose. They weren't the central focal point. They weren't the the major role in the plot or anything. They were just pff, kind of thrown in there for the sake of throwing them in there. Okay, the last thing I wanted to mention is Nardol. Uh, again, I think I've mentioned this before about his character in the the Christmas special. I, I just don't understand why his why 
why is his character even in Doctor Who? He's the he's the companion for the Doctor in the least possible way. Okay, he he he's only there for uh, occasional uh, attempts at comic relief. He's basically there just to kind of lighten the mood. The main problem with that is yet again you get this this clash of uh, tones where where the episode can't figure out what kind of tone it wants to set, whether it wants to be serious and scary or whether it wants to be funny and quirky. And when you have two two you know significantly different tones like that clashing with one another, you just end up with a mess, and just a, a car crash. I don't know why his character is even in there. Uh, the, his his he he didn't contribute anything to this story in the same way he didn't contribute anything to the story in the the, um, the last the Christmas special. Hell, I can't even remember what it was called now. That's how forgettable it was. That's pretty much it. That's my take on this episode. I mean, it wasn't I wasn't impressed, and uh, it was pretty much. Uh, you can pretty much go through a checklist of things to expect from an episode, an opener from Stephen Moffat, all the way down to the companion crying, you know, in the tears. Uh, it was, you know, verbatim, scene for scene, shot for shot, line for line in the script, exactly what you would expect from a season opener from Stephen Moffat. There was nothing new about this. There was nothing. Uh, there was no game-changing reboot to this. I mean, it was it was exactly the same kind of season opener that you've been giving us for the last 10 years. And this episode, no one died. I mean, I think the only death was Heather, and we don't even know for sure if she's dead or not. We don't even know if her personality is gone, because uh, you, you never make it clear. You, you focus so little on on the motives behind the villain that we, never, we didn't learn anything about the villain in this story. And the Doctor didn't play really any major role in the story. He just kind of ran around running his mouth for 50 minutes, and he, he played taxi driver for uh, Bill and Nardo. If I had to rate it on a scale of one, uh, 0 to 10 or 1 to 10, I would say a 3. I mean, it was uh, it's about what I expected from you know a, a season opener from Steve Moffat. It was unimpressive, it was uninteresting, it was unengaging, and it was boring and stale. It was lacking substance. And it just seemed to focus entirely on just cramming the character of Bill down everyone's throat and just kind of like um, emphasizing that this character is the new companion for the Doctor. And uh, there's just no need for that. There's nothing in this episode that is incentivizing me to watch it again, you know, to buy DVDs or watch it on, you know, on some streaming service or anything. I'm going to try my best to do reviews of every episode of the season, but I can't promise anything because my schedule stays so busy these days. And um, we're in the summertime now, and that's when my business, that's when I'm the busiest, you know. So um, I, I'll try my best to get a video up, but it's it takes time to shoot and edit these videos and upload them. So, uh, but this being, you know, we haven't had any Doctor Who for over a year, and this, there was so much that we were promised. For this story, I had to do a video on it because I had to. I have to point out how often Stephen Moffat doesn't deliver on his promises. I'm willing to watch it at least once because I don't know if I'll like it or dislike it until I watch it. That seems pretty logical, doesn't it? So for those of you who are always telling me if you hate it so much, why do you keep watching it? That's why I keep watching it is because every now and then Moffat is able to deliver an episode that's worth it's worth noting, like Heaven Sent. But they're they're becoming you know almost the exception at this point. They're not the rule. But I have to see all of them in order. I have to see them at least once, each of them at least once, in order to make an assessment. And uh, that's why I keep watching. The other reason why I keep watching it is just to <clears throat> confirm my own predictions. You know, I, I for months now I've been predicting that this was what this episode was going to be like, and it it was exactly what I expected. It was not anything different. There was no improvement. It was exactly what I expected from Stephen Moffat. A complete, utter mess.